All right, so Jonah, he gets a call from God, and God tells him that there's a city, Nineveh, that's falling into moral disarray. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's a universal story. It's like all cultures are always falling into disarray. It's their nature. Just entropy does that, right? Things change. The, the world changes. The environment changes. And the culture doesn't keep up very well. And then, of course, it has corrupt elements. And so it's an inter eternal story. The individual is always placed in relationship to a culture that's somewhat corrupt. And then the question is, well, what do you do about it? And if the answer is nothing, well, then it'll just get more corrupt. And if the answer is be corrupt too, then it will just get more corrupt. So the answer has to be to oppose the corruption because that's the only way it's going to stop Now, God threatens to destroy this city because of its corruption and I don't think you need to presume anything particularly metaphysical about that to understand it It's very straightforward that the more corrupt the culture is, and the less trust is possible between individuals the less productive the culture is going to be, because why do anything if some corrupt person is just going to come and take it? you know, it, it might even be that the culture is so corrupt that if you are good for something and you produce resources, you're actually more likely to get killed because you have something of value so, like, there's just, you're just not going anywhere with that and why would you work if you didn't have any sense that you know, you could store up the value of your work for some reasonable time in the future so, if the society is corrupt and there's no trust, it's degenerating and you know, it might live for a while, but is isn't going to last very long, and so that's the idea, corrupt societies collapse that leaves open what corruption means, anyways Jonah thinks, no, <laughs> no bloody way I'm not going to that city they can go to hell as far as I'm concerned, and that's really what he thinks and why in the world should I do anything about it anyways? and these are good objections, it's like why would you do that? and you'll face this, believe me, in your life you will face this, in fact you already do, always, constantly, continually in small ways perhaps, when you're interacting with people who aren't treating you properly and when you're acting, and those might be your parents, they might be your friends, they might be people at your workplace they might be professors they're playing a crooked game, and you don't like it and you know it's crooked and so then the question is, well what should you do about it? well, if you know, you're crook know it's crooked, it's not so good to play along with it I mean, we'll say that you know it's crooked by your own standard of values it, de it degrades you to play along with it you're going to stand up and oppose it? well, no, <laughs> probably not you're probably going to do what Jonah did, jump on a ship and get the hell out of there, and you know, that's a logical thing to do, but it doesn't solve the problem and I think this has something to do with human ethical responsibility, because there are other old stories and I'll tell you one likely, where the son of the king the lion king the son of the king he goes off and he's some pathetic adolescent and then he's shamed by the reappearance of his old girlfriend into turning into something vaguely useful and he opens his eyes and he goes back and he fights Scar and you know, it's a scene of hell, right? because there's fire everywhere and he fights Scar he finds out Scar killed his father he casts him into the pit, roughly speaking, and then the rain comes and then you know, the movie returns to its beginning fundamentally it's an, Paradise, Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained, that's the movie and, and, I mean, that's the story of human beings, you know you're in a place that's working out pretty well something happens to knock you off your perch you're down in the chaos for a good amount of time and maybe you never get out but maybe you learn something down there maybe you strengthen your character and then you pop up to a new place and maybe it's better better aim, better you now, I'm not being overly optimistic about this, I know perfectly well that people encounter impediments during their life that 
they find almost impossible to recover from but it's the best shot you have so anyways Jonah runs away but God isn't very happy about that because it's actually Jonah's destiny it's necessary for Jonah to repair the city so God sends a storm and you know the waves are high and and, and I think what that means is because the water is often a symbol for the unconscious and that's because things lurk down there in the water and that you can pull up that, that are useful monstrous things that you can pull up that are useful, you can fish for them you can go fishing in your own being for answers, which is what you do when you try to think right? you ask yourself a question and you wait, and maybe an answer appears it's like, where did that come from? you didn't know what the answer was before it appeared would it just pop into being out of nowhere? Who knows? So you fish. So anyways, the waves come and the, the boat's going to be knocked over. And, and that's what happens, I think, when you know when you know you should do something. I mean, everyone has the, this experience, I believe. Perhaps you would be willing to put up your hands if this experience is foreign to you. Okay? There's part of you telling you you should do something. And it's hard to do it effortful, and maybe you're afraid of it, and so you don't do it, you just procrastinate, right? and so how do you feel about that? good? I mean, so what, you feel that you're betraying yourself your anxiety actually gets worse, not better, even though, you know, you can put it off moment to moment, but that doesn't help, because every time you put it off, the anxiety just grows a little bit you're not proud of yourself, you have a sense that you're making things more chaotic than they should be you know, and if you do that long enough, and I'm sure many of you have had that experience, if you do that long enough, if that becomes habitual, things will get so stormy around you that you'll fall right into the, into the chaos, into the watery chaos, and maybe you'll drown. So it's not a very good idea to run from your destiny, let's say. Whatever that might be. And you need a destiny, you need a, a place to aim at, because that's what gives your life meaning. And you need meaning in your life, because life is hard. So, you know, you need something to buttress yourself against that. So anyways, they wake Jonah up, and Jonah says, eh, that's probably my fault, because like, I'm running away from something I'm supposed to do, and you know, God isn't very happy about that, so why don't you just throw me over, overboard? And the crew isn't very happy about that, but the waves are really starting to come up, and Jonah's pretty insistent that he's the cause of the problem, and so they draw they draw lots, and, and Jonah is chosen, and so they decide to toss him into the ocean and immediately everything's calm so he's a center of chaos, because he's not doing what he's supposed to do fine, well then a whale comes up and swallows him and then he's in the whale for three days now that's a weird thing the whale, that's the whale that that Geppetto's in that's a dragon it's that thing that you have to go out there and conquer to get something of value now when you've made an error, when you've fallen off the, the pathway, when you've deviated from what you know you should do it produces a state of internal chaos and worry and concern you're, you're thrust into the unknown, you're thrust into unknown territory and chaos you don't know what to do and that's often symbolized by the encounter with a, with a monster like a dragon or something that lives under the water that's, and I think the reason for that is, as far as I've been able to tell, is that human beings, because we've been prey animals for forever in our battle with carnivorous lizards, for example, and alligators and even dinosaurs, because there were dinosaurs around at the time of our most distant ancestors and there was even a cat at one point that was, that was adapted with teeth to pierce human skulls so it had a head that was exactly shaped to grab you here and put a tooth through the back of your skull so like we've come through some rough times man and we have a, a system in our mind that's a threat predator detection system that's the thing that makes little kids think about monsters in the dark right, because while there is monsters in the dark parents always say, well there's no monsters in the dark it's like, that's not true the dark is full of monsters there might not be any in your room right at that moment 
but that doesn't mean there aren't monsters in the dark and crimes take place like criminals don't get up at 6 in the morning and like you know have breakfast and go rob a bank they do it they do that sort of thing at night people do the things that are fit for the night in the night and lots of predators are nocturnal and you can't see very well in the dark and kids aren't stupid you know they've evolved to stay pretty damn close to the fire because the kids that wandered away from the fire got picked off by hyenas and lions and you know crocodiles and whatever else the hell was out there to eat the unwary so the circuit that we use to to defend ourselves against predators as we've evolved cortically that circuit has has come to represent what we don't know in general because the predators of course inhabit where we don't know and so evolution is a conservative force and we use the circuits that we've evolved to represent new things and so the unknown the chaos is often represented by a monster that swallows you up and pulls you down and you know when you're feeling terrible you don't say well I'm feeling up you say I'm feeling down well why is that well down is worse I guess you're flat on the ground when you're down or you're in a hole or something like that you're hiding in a hole you know it's down and you're threatened by something you know maybe you're threatened by your own inadequacy, that might be part of it, maybe that's partly what you imagine as a monstrous force because, you know, your proclivity towards procrastination and your weakness of character is part and parcel of why you happen to be in the underworld and that's the underworld, the mythological underworld that's where you go when things fall apart and if you understand that, if you know that that's what that means then you have one of the keys that opens up ancient stories to you, and you understand things you can, your life can be in, organized, going very well and then something comes up and poof everything changes, some axiom that you were living by and it might be the existence of a partner, it might be a job, it might be your health any of those things gone and you go somewhere when that happens you go somewhere, it's a state of being, you're still in the same world, but it's not the same at all anymore everything about it is different it's all negative and dark and you don't know what to do, you're confused and so, what do you do down there in the underworld when things have fallen apart especially if if it's the worst possible case scenario and you realize that you actually had something to do with your demise that's really annoying, you know when something bad happens to you and then you know, you grind yourself into bits trying to figure out what the hell happened and then you realize that, well, you were playing a causal role now sometimes you're so depressed you assume you're playing a causal role and you weren't, it's not easy to figure out by any stretch of the imagination and it isn't that everyone who does something terrible is at fault for it but sometimes you find that you were off the path somehow and maybe even that you knew it and that you didn't attend to it and that's why all of this the fan and so then down there in that chaos you decide that you're going to do what you're supposed to do instead and then maybe you get to rise up again renewed if you're lucky and then you can go fix the city and that's what this story is about and that's why I picked the image to represent the course because really what happens you see with the uh, psychoanalysts the road to to health, if you're not doing well which means that as you act in the world, you're not getting what you want there's something wrong with your, the match between your presuppositions and your actions habitual, and the way the world is responding to you and so it's not turning out for you and the question is, well, what can you do about that? and one answer might be to examine yourself for presuppositions and action patterns that are not serving you well, and to find out what they are and what to do about them and maybe some of that is, maybe you're not moving forward because of fear and maybe that fear is grounded in terrible experiences that you had in the past that you've never been able to understand and maybe one of the ways of gluing yourself back together and expanding your personality so that you could in fact live properly in the world is to go back to those terrible 
events and untie them and straighten them out and understand them and drop them and that's what psychotherapy is about in large part psychoanalytic behavioral doesn't matter what are you afraid of what are you avoiding what are you failing to develop maybe from fear maybe from avoidance god only knows maybe from disgust how can you get over it how can you reclaim those parts of your self 